get stuck into it, otherwise you'll never get lunch. So, yeah, as Rob said, I'm Damien Jones, I work with the Irrigated Cropping Council, I previously worked with DPI, part of the Grains team, um, working with Dale Gray, etc. across here, and yeah, some of these workshops are starting to remind me of about 10 years ago when we were doing a lot of um, cropping stuff with the dairy team in response to low allocations again. So I thought it's a bit hard to see on this. This is a, a little trial block at Kerrang. Um, field day on the 26th of September. I'll just get that plug in there now. This is in the front here is this is our dry land crop. Didn't get pre-irrigated. This little low bit through here is our pre-irrigation and that big bit of uh, oats at the top there, that's one spring irrigation. So that's how much water has made a difference to our, to our production this year. So, uh, come on, please go. So my discussion is going to be around the gross margins, but we need to get a bit of an assessment of what, what crops. So there was a few croppers here, um, mainly dairy farmers. If you're mainly dairy farmers, I'll have to apologise first because my allegiance is with cropping. So when I talk about good prices, I'm talking 300 for <laughs> hay and 400 for grain. So my apologies in advance because I'll put my foot in it at some stage. So I'm just going to do a little bit about um, looking at crops and seeing if they're worth irrigating um, and then go into some gross margin analysis. And that's when I'll be asking for your uh, your figures that you want to put in. I've, I've got a simple spreadsheet, in some ways a simple spreadsheet trying to answer complex problems um, or questions, but we'll see how we go. Um, we've rolled this out a few years, be, uh, for a few years now, and most people will find the discussion useful in, in terms of you know, getting some real facts and figures about um, water, and particularly that question that came up before about, you know, the assumption was $300 water, no way known am I going to use it, I'm going to sell it. But then when you actually do the figures, because commodity prices have risen, it actually is quite worthwhile in some situations, as long as you've got the potential there. So, um, really about the crop potential, and so this is mainly coming from a, um, a grains perspective. The key one here is it's not stressed to date, and I'll explain that a little bit more. but. It, um, we are coming very rapidly to the, to the end of the window of when crops are going to respond to irrigation, if you, if you haven't irrigated already. Um, a lot of ours, I'm from the west at Kerrang, a lot of our crops have already had a, a, a spring irrigation and we've actually done our second one. That's how, you know, it's how early we've had to have gone. Um, and, to, and before you go splashing around water, make sure that you've got something that's going to respond. So we're sort of pushing that this that if you haven't got around this 600, 800 shoots per square metre in a wheat crop, you really haven't got the potential to drive good yields um, and then make, make some money using the expensive water. Variety maturity comes into it in the gross margin. In simply, this means that if it's an early maturing variety, you're not going to need as much water in the spring, assuming that we're going to get bugger or rainfall. So we're going to you know, have f physically have to use more water to get some of these crops home, if you've, particularly if you've gone some of the later, more sort of grazing style wheats. Obviously nutrition and disease, if these are, this, uh, these are poor and you've got lots of disease, then you're not going to get the, the potential. Um, and the thing we've been really pushing along, and this came out of about work about three years ago and 10 years ago, that um, a, a good grain crop has a hell of a lot of dry matter that's there and so you should really look at that, you know, the options. that You don't have to necessarily take these things through to grain um, and I've got some figures to back some of this, these ideas up. So quickly on to, if this is um, some work that's, that was a uh, project run by the Irrigated Cropping Council and New South Wales DPI did a lot of work towards looking at how to, to get to grow these crops properly. The critical thing is this stage in here. So this is full flag leaf emergence on a wheat plant. This is Orm peat. Um, this stage in here, the crop is setting its yield potential. So if, you're, if it's dry and you're hanging back irrigating, because I only want to give it one spring irrigation, you'd let, if you moist, dry stress it, moisture stress it through this period, the plant is, plants are reasonably intelligent. They want to reproduce. So they, they're all the time assessing the season. So when they get to this stage, and this is the sort of the final stage in setting yield potential, if it, you're stressing them out, they just simply say, no, nah, 
I'm not going to set as many grains. I'm going to cut off yield because I just want to simply survive. So I'll set fewer seeds in the hope that I survive, I survive as a plant. So critical in here to make sure there's no moisture stress. So if, you're, if it's been dry from full flag, you still haven't watered and there's cracks and the crop looks like crap and you start watering it here when you see the head starts popping out, you've already shed a lot of yield. So that's one thing I'm trying to get through and, you know, and this time frame is now. So if you've already stressed it, it's possibly not worthwhile persisting with a grain crop and then hay may be more appropriate. Um, now, to, uh, this is some work we did a long time ago and it's looking at just the accumulation of dry matter over time. So we've got here, so this is before, so this is, is a hay crop. Um, we were mucking around at that stage at, at um, some of the hay stuff that was coming out of the uh, breeding stuff that was coming out of South Australia. So we're just looking at what we were doing and what we were producing. So this is not quite flag leaf emergence. So we've got about six tonne of um, dry matter here. And as we, this is a fortnight later, so this is Orn Peak, that critical stage I was sort of talking about before. So we've now got up to eight tonne. But then as we go through into flowering and then into milky dough, we're getting this huge increase in dry matter. And me as running the trial block at Kerrang, this is what we're taking advantage of this year. We've given the plants the water about here. We've got enough water without trying to push grain to get it to about here. So for what we've done, water here, using about a meg, $300, we've doubled our dry matter. And that's um, not just in oats, we also did some work with the dairy team, and I think this was in 2008, where I got a broad range of crops through here, the grass, oats, barleys, sort of barley, um, and wheat, and a triticale. And you can see that while we're at booting stage, we're you know, nominally somewhere out between four to six tonne, but by the time we get to milky dough, we're up to you know, 15, 12, 15 tonne. So there's a huge increase of biomass through here, and generally we can achieve that with one watering. So that's just to give you a bit of information when we play with the next bit. So what I've got, and I'm happy to hand this if you're interested in it. We've built up a little, as I said, it's, a, it's just a simple spreadsheet. Um, we've got all the different crops across the bottom. And if I just go across to wheat, because it's probably the easiest crop to discuss. Um, it's simply, yes, it's a gross margin tool. Now, there's two parts to it. One is, and this is particularly when we're talking to croppers, is it worthwhile irrigating these things or is it worthwhile shutting them down and put the water on the market and get the money that way? So just summarising the gross margin for the, for the crop, but we also, to get around, or well, what happens if we, don't, um, if we don't irrigate, so we get less yield, but we get some water then to put onto the market at whatever thing and various scenarios in between. So I'm happy to go through a bit of a scenario to see if you, see if you think it, it's worthwhile, if there's some croppers here. And this is where yield potential comes into it. You know, the key thing in getting a gross margin right is getting your production right and at the right cost. Because if you get those two wrong, then the whole, you can argue about all these little figures in here, but if, that's wrong and that's wrong, then it's sort of a pointless exercise because they're the biggest influence on whether the, you get a positive gross margin or not. So happy for you to, if you've got some crops out there and you want to go through the scenarios. Yes, no? <laughs> yep, right out. Um, so, and this is where, it's, it's also good to see um, where you can play with your potential. So this is a few scenarios we used through Moulmein, Bort and Namurka. And this sort of is the general summary. So we're assuming that's a reasonable sort of crop. We're going to get 380. Colin's happy with 380. And will it Oh, wherever you want. What do you reckon locally it's going to be? Um, On farm. 300. Uh, wheat. Sorry, you're talking wheat. Wheat. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, at least that. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yep. Yep, 380. So basically, we've pre irrigated using $150 water. That was what it was about beginning of the season. 
we've sown it, we've put some fertiliser on it, put some seed. Now, the first discussion we're probably going to have is, if we fully irrigate it, is two megalitres at $60? <laughs> now, why I use $60 is because that, if you have allocation, that is what it's physically going to cost you. You're not going to say to Golden Murray Water, I can get 320 for it, so I'll pay you 320 for it. You pay them $60. Now we have this, this has been an interesting discussion over the time, because some people want to put in the opportunity cost. But at the end of the day, when you pay your bill to Gold Murray Water or you go to your bank manager, you're not going to say, oh, well, I only actually spent 60, but I could have sold it for 320, therefore I haven't made as much money. Uh, yeah. So that's why I'm using 60. So everyone's happy to stick with 60. We can also, because it's a simple spreadsheet, we can actually throw in what 320 or 340 water looks like. So given those two megs in the spring at $60 each, there's still quite a lot of, oh, that return's probably better than we've seen for the last couple of years, where grain prices have been down around that 200. So from a, once again, from a grain perspective, not necessarily a dairy perspective, um, 380 has pr grain prices more than compensated for that more expensive water. Can you put in the temporary water price? Yep, the certainly can. That's why beauty of a nice little gross margin. If I can see whether. So if we go 340, so we've bought all our water in spring. So we're still making, you know, close to thousand dollars a hectare. So it's still worthwhile using. What that at the top there, that, does that say that the 39 versus mm. irrigate versus don't irrigate, it's saying don't bother irrigate, doesn't it? Oh, uh, I'll have to change, I'll have to look there. So, oh sorry, so what, yeah, so I should have made a point of that. So this is just to, to compare the two scenarios. So the, the critical thing, so this is a six tonne crop at that, if we go to wheat low yield, which is, I'm gonna sell me water. So I've got to automatically bring that back to two megs. So I get a bit mixed up. So basically, if we didn't irrigate, and this is where I'm after thing, what would you expect y your yield would be? Is it gonna slip, slip down to two ton? Is it gonna be zero? Or is, we had some confident people in Bort who thought we'd go three ton without any irrigation, but I think they were. Yeah, so is a two tonne crop, I've been accused of being too Western fo focused and too desire <laughs> that stuff is so much better over here than, than over at Kerrang. <laughs> so two tonne? That's with the free irrigation as well. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so is, is that a little bit low? Is, could, you know, we sneak it up two and a half, but don't do that. So basically we've used water to, to pre-irrigate it. We've realised the season's turned to crap. We've cut back our nitrogen slightly. Now we're going to put up two megs for sale at 340, and this is where you can actually um, uh, achieve your opportunity cost. Now, here is the water sales now down in the in the gross margin. Now I've taken off. I hope I've taken off sixty dollars. You know what you would have to pay for the water. So that's the bit that's left between what you've sold it for and what you have to pay for it. So we're down to 8.34. So if we go back to the thing. So if we irrigate, we're gonna make, out of our little nominally 40 hectare paddock, we're gonna make 39 grand. If we don't irrigate, we're gonna make 33. So when, the, you know, those two are starting to come together. That's with water at 340, but if you are happy to accept my assumption that it's, it actually physically costs us 60, Now, that is a lot of assumptions. <laughs> but it does highlight that you, just because water's at 340, you just can't immediately say, no, nah, I'm not gonna bother. But it is really critical on getting this wheat yield right. If, we, if you've got a crap crop and you go and put water on it, two megs of water on it, and we change that to four tonnes the hectare, we immediately, yeah, we shouldn't have watered. We should have bailed out. That makes sense? So How much modelling has there been done? I think around the timing of irrigation and yield. It's actually, it's probably not the modelling, it's, we've had probably now a consistent um, 
consistent message for oh, since Martin Stafford did that stuff early 2000s that that um, booting stage is a super critical for getting the water right then um, because the, the temptation was always to, there's a front coming there's another front coming to, to drag it out and make it as late as possible and it was just shedding yield so you know that, that as I was saying at the start if you haven't if things are already progressed past that and you haven't irrigated already, then it's, um, yeah, it's, you want me to keep going? <laughs> um, yeah, you're, you're throwing good water after bad, potentially. But now, I made that mention about hay. So if we're assuming that a six tonne grain crop is gonna have around about 10 to 12, or normally it's got 12 to 14 tonnes of biomass simply the relationship between grain and, and um, biomass. So if we assess it at six tonne, there's probably, yeah, 12 to 14 tonne of dry, uh, dry matter there, but of course we're gonna get some losses. So we're gonna go through an option through, if we say, okay, we've got a, a standing wheat crop, what am I gonna do with it? Um, I think it would go normally six tonne, so I'll put in a conservative 10 tonne as hay. 300 for hay, you want to back off a bit or you... You can't put a 10 ton of the hectare, but anything inside spin itself for 300, I think, you're right. <laughs> How many years have we been going on about feed test, feed test, and as soon as you get a year like this, just pfft, exactly. it's hay. And you, you, our office, so this is a little side, our office in Karahang sits on the highway. Coming, so we see every truck that's heading from sort of Mallee to cross at Barham into, into the New South Wales. And the amount of I'm calling it cardboard would be um, very positive. There's some absolute shit going through at the moment. Um, there was one the other day, I think the stock hadn't seen green feed for so long that they thought they'd buy some bales with green grass growing out the top. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yes. <laughs> yeah, right out. So, getting back to the serious bit. Right out. We're going to grow 10 tonne, um, 300 bucks. So, we've had basically our same, and this is where you can put your prices in. We'll go through the same scenario. We actually, I'll go back to 80, because we're using the crop. We've backed off our nitrogen a little bit. Now, what we've done, what we've done in this case, we're gonna give it one spring irrigation, because you saw in those figures before, one irrigation at sort of this time of year, a huge increase in biomass. So take my word from it, I can't say I'm from the government anymore, um, that, um, yeah, we, in, in general, particularly a year like this, we really need that spring irrigation to, to drive that yield. So we're gonna use one meg at $60 to really push that dry matter up to get us up to this 10, maybe 12 tonne, and we're gonna sell that other megalitre. So if we then do the figures, it's not going to quite squeeze in. So we're up to a gross margin of $2,200 a hectare, including the sale of that megalitre. So in some ways, if you like making hay, and as Colin was alluding to, there's some people who are philosophically opposed to ever making hay, um, that one irrigation, very similar crop to a six tonne grain crop, is going to make you about $2,200. And, and, um, and that's, there's the assumptions on mow, rake and bale prices. So they can be adjusted if you like, particularly if you've got to get contractors in. Um, some blokes I work with over at Kerrang, they do a lot of hay. Uh, they reckon they can mow, rake and bale for 60 bucks a tonne, but they've got their own gear, so. So, rightio, so that's the gross margin. That's impressive, and anybody's hunting too. <laughs> so if you knock that, Ah, uh, that's yeah. It starts to. So if we go to eight. We're still we're still competing with grain. Um, if this starts to slide, that's the bit that's a scary bit. So if we come back to two seventy five, why isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, that's all. So I suppose the message we're giving to our croppers is, 
don't discount hay. Um, and like the blokes I was looking at, we're looking at crops yesterday, we're pretty sure that it's an a eight tonne barley crop, but they also look at the figures and they're more than happy that, yeah, that to save them the hassle of that extra irrigation, they've already had one irrigation, it's gonna have to have another one at least to, to get it home as a grain crop. So they're really looking at, um, yeah, going with hay. So it's gonna be a massive hay crop. The only thing that might go against that, Damien, is um, seed. Because people are starting to get really terrified yep. about seed next year. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, there's a couple of crops I've looked at. They're absolute. They're not worth irrigating, but it is that seed supply is the <coughs> is the other side of the of the coin. Do you have that graph for other crops like lucerne or corn or something? Or? Funny you answered that. Ask that question. <laughs> that is what we're getting away with. <laughs> As the room's full of dairy farmers here, yeah. we're more relevant. Oh, yeah, no, that's all right, no. But, um, yes, so, once again, it, yeah. Yeah, I'm just you know, sort of on that. So, if you're looking at it from the other point of view, uh, what number should you be looking at if you're a dairy farmer wondering whether to irrigate for hay, uh, hay crop versus buying in? Versus buying in, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the way I was doing this the other day, <coughs> Oh, how's that going to work? I haven't... Can I answer that question in a slightly... Right, so we we also looked at... Uh, in requests, we were looking at um, forage, say, forage sorghum. So this, this is, I think, is going to answer the same question, but I've got my mind around this example. Right, so at forage sorghum, at about 12 tonnes of the hectare, now, I've put in a price there at 250. Now, why that's 250 there is because this is forage sorghum for con being conserved, right? Out. So this has a massive $570 a hectare worth of conservation costs. Right, so at 250, the gross margin is about zero, $27 a hectare. So this is what I was playing the other day. So if you are gonna grow this stuff for hay, 250 is your break-even price. So if you can buy hay cheaper than or 250, well, and and this is going to be a bit of personal risk as well. So am I going to grow it? It's going to cost me 250 dollars a ton, or is it better to go and buy some, something that someone's already taken that risk of cutting it and baling it and putting it in a truck and feed testing it, so I know what I'm getting for, for 50 bucks, which I think is probably a reasonable deal. Because the joke is when we're talking about cereal hay is how do you know when it's going to rain? It's when you put the mower back in the paddock, uh, back in the shed. So there's always that risk that if we drop 12 tonne, oh, this will be, you know, say three, four tonne cuts, that one of them is going to get cut, rained on and then you're going to end up, you're going to have to cut it, or you're going to have to bale it because you need it off the paddock to let the stuff grow again. So you've got all that cost and it'll be less than cardboard. So yeah, you'll have a very well mulched garden, Ooh. very expensively mulched garden. So yeah, so does that answer your question? So if we're, if we're going something like forage sorghum, that it is gonna cost, and you're gonna have to get all this stuff brought in, as in contractors, then 250 a tonne, it's gonna cost you. But if, yeah. Is that the way you look for maize as well? You look for maize as a deal? No, yeah, more loose than actually. It's a fair to say too from that graph of the tipping point in that exercise is water costs at 340. Yeah, it's a point point. Yeah, it's starting to get the water goes past yeah. that. It's tipping. Yes, because and yeah, once again it depends on your attitude to risk of what you're doing, you know, because we could get another frost in two weeks' time and totally wipe out your six ton crop and it's now yeah. But yeah. But yes, three yeah, around that three forty is probably where you would start to question using it and it's easier to sell it and have a lot less he headaches. Uh, Lucen, so this, once again, very happy to, to hear from what you think of the appropriate either production or price. And we can do the same scenario with, with um, so this is from a producer so, production side of things, but we can simply run the price down till we, so at, and I've heard lucent prices anything from 450 to 750. 
depending where it's ending up. Horse people don't seem to care. <laughs> um, so at 5.50... Yeah. Well, I was you trying to have to ask for irrigation if you want to hire air. Yeah. 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 So look, I can, and that's the beauty of this thing. If you want to go up, say you want to, so normally if I was going to push 12 ton, I would be, I would be saying eight megs. Anyone want to disagree? And as I said, you can, I can give you a copy of this, and you can take it home and play with it to your heart's content. Um, but even if we, if we push water up, even buying all your own water, uh, sort of buying water, 12 tonnes, at five, not normally 550 is your, if you're a producer, there's still quite a good gross margin. And that's, I suppose, the, the thing that was when we started playing with these figures is that when we start, start here at 300 for water, oh, no way. But we were working on commodity prices being that 225 sort of thing. And because the commodity prices have come up, and I'm not gonna say that's a good thing, <laughs> Um, it's made the market, you know, it's, it can pay for itself. Um, so if we go the other way, so did you want to go say, what is it going to cost? Well, the one question I have is what if you take out the cutback or cutting and whaling costs? Oh, and graze it, yeah. Um, so what I can easily go, my rake and bale, 1,200 metres. Um, yeah, so that's not bad. Yeah, 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 The price then is a little bit more difficult to well, you still have this for what you buy it in for. Yeah. 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 So, well, if we do, now, I might have this wrong, but say if we do the same scenario. So, if I put in 275 there, we're still making money. So, if I'm looking for, the, for this, zero, this to zero out to see what the actual oh, cost yeah. is. Yeah. But the. Rob will correct me. So around about 250. <coughs> but Rob will correct me because he, he, grazing a 12 ton lucerne crop isn't going to be the same as buying in 12 ton of lucerne because there's the amount of feed left in the paddock will be a lot higher with grazing than, than actually you putting in the mixing wagon and making sure they eat every last leaf, whereas they'll crap on it and you know what they do in paddocks. So 50% utilisation is probably could be a bit higher. Depends. You could even get excited and do cut and carry. So. Yeah, well. That's yeah, cool. with, with lesser cost than this, but yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what's that saying then? Less feed was less than two hundred and fifty dollars a ton. If you're consuming it, the, the, the cost of buying it would have to come down yeah. by two hundred and fifty bucks a ton before you yep. consider buying it in overgrowing so. Yep. So yep. <laughs> no, keep those loosened producers happy. <laughs> and this, um, I did maize too, and we had a, quite a few croppers looking at um, looking at maize. Um, I'm going to shut up very soon, Rob. That's good. So if you, you so this is for grain. So, but the, the product, you know, the, the cost is going to be more or less the same for for a forage crop. But you know, they're, they're looking at 400, and this is where the uncertainty in the market comes in for these blokes. Because if New South Wales, Northern New South Wales, Southern Queensland gets some good rains in the next couple of months, even though it says it's average, they're gonna plant a massive sorghum crop. And so that's gonna then, then start putting pressure back onto the, to the grain prices and could, you know, could see them come back. And that's what happened last year. They got some rain, put sorghum in, and that was the last rain they saw. So the price, little blip, then as soon as they saw, oh, it's turned to crap, gone up again. So, you know, even buying, uh, so that's six megs of water to grow 14 tonne, which is probably an underestimation. If we go to six, maybe, once again, you can fill in your own figures. There's still money to be made, even though water's ridiculously expensive, because once again, the, the commodity prices has, has sort of compensated for the, the water, so. What have you chucked in there on the fertiliser? Got oh, 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 sorry, that's 250 of urea and top dressing with another 350 of urea. So that 300 kilos is DAP or MOP, so your phosphorus requirement, and then split applications of urea. So did you work from a dairy farmer's perspective? I don't know if, if I can 
doing that. <laughs> so three, three thousand two hundred a hectare cost. Yep. Divide that by the yield for that ton. I'm not sure what that is. That might be about two hundred and fifty bucks. I'm not sure. What's a ton. So that's going to be cheaper. You know, I would have put that three hundred and fifty fee. Two hundred and forty dollars a ton. Oh no, sorry. And that no, that that's, that's wrong. Right. That's that's grain. So. What's a, about 50, 50, 50 for thing? So if you were growing forage, yep. yep so that's what you're... From that time, it's good. Good deal. So in under that scenario, and I'm not sure about, I've got 280, <coughs> excuse me, so I'm not sure what um, forage, harvest. for, ha, forage harvesting and packing in a pit costs. Sorry? It's probably around 100 a tonne. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's going to. It's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if. So if we're growing. So 1400 Sorry, 100 and. How much a ton? $14 a ton. No, it's a cost to do it. Yeah. Yeah, well, last time I spoke to someone there, was a few years ago, it was up around 90. Yeah, so no, that's. To get it in the stack. Yep. So if I can just. Yeah. 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 All right, do you want to go 20? Well, that's not a zero. That's a, so that's talk, a zero. Does 20 is dry matter and your, your contracting cost was that? That'd be wet. That was wet. So dry is carbon <coughs> and dry, you're done with that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, so, if you're only paying ninety dollars a dry matter ton, is that the ninety wet? No, no, ninety wet. So, yeah. yeah. So it's four. It's two hundred times twenty. Four thousand. Whoa! It makes it bloody expensive. Mm. So. If you can see that, so that's not, so that yield by those, that cost, it's costing you 352 a ton, dry matter ton. Hmm. <laughs> oh, you might be able to sneak, sneak off a watering, but really, as I said before, if you can, right, we'll cut off a meg, but it makes bugger all difference, 335. It's these bits, and in this case, this bit, <laughs> that really makes the difference. Want me to wind up? All right. Well, I can leave it there. I was asked about autumn startup from cropping perspective, but if you, most of you are dairy farmers, it's probably not quite as relevant, and there's probably going to be another workshop in the future if you want to wrap it up. Because I've got data to say what you should do with, well, what you possibly could do with your spring watering, but autumn watering is if it's not for pasture or you, know, you need grass or whatever. But for crops, it's, once again, how long is a piece of string? Because it just depends on your faith in, in the break as to whether it's worthwhile using expensive water to pre-irrigate. If people want to access your spreadsheet data? Um, I'm more than happy to email it to people. Um, it's not, as I said, it's a simple tool, not a, <laughs> it's a simple tool trying to answer a complex question. So there's a million other little things that come into the, to the decision. But I'm more than happy to email it. And for the funders watching at home, um, world's worst email address: Damien Jones, and it's Damien with a I A N at Irrigated Cropping Council, all one word. dot com. dot au. <laughs> well, I've got a Yahoo address that's only that long. <laughs> but yeah, I'm more than happy to to hand it out, and you can then play with the figures to your heart's content.